After popular requests from our awesome subscriber base, we got it here. Yep, it's the DeWalt Sexy Flexi 120 volt cordless or corded miter saw. Today we're gonna slice, we're gonna dice. We'll talk about the cordless function, the corded function, everything you get with the saw, all of the specs, and we're gonna nitpick a little bit. Let's start with how my sticker's on crooked. So there is the model number right down there below. I put a link in the description for you to check this out. Now this was sent over by the Home Depot for us to take a look at because there was so much request. We're also going to do a tool duel against the all new Milwaukee M18 fuel cordless saw. So make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss that. Now the wall did it right on this one. This is a dual powered saw. You got the battery powered or you have the corded option. In the kit, you're gonna get everything you need to get started. So you'll get the two 6AH 60 volt batteries, and you'll also get the corded power supply, which I'll show you here in a bit. Now this definitely isn't the newest saw out on the market, but it has so much to offer. I can't wait to show you what this thing can do. We're also gonna talk about some of the things I wish they would have improved on, but man, what a beautiful saw right out of the box. Yep, of course it is brushless. But being built like a tank also brings the weight up to 56 pounds. Does seem a little bit heavier to me though than the 56 pounds, but we'll talk about that. So if you plan on moving this thing around a lot, well, you might want to get some help. Battery placement, real nice, goes right in the back. You have to use two batteries at the same time. You cannot use one at a time. Now what DeWalt did that was really smart and a lot of other manufacturers do is they give you the option of the corded. Now me personally on a miter saw, that's not that big of a deal to me. On a table saw, yes, definitely would love to have that option. But you just slide that power supply right in where the batteries would go and you plug it in. So if you do have to charge your batteries and you need to go to that power supply, you can do that. Or if you just want to run it with the power supply, whatever you want to do, really. Just not really sure why you would buy a battery powered miter saw if you're going to use the cord. Just saying. You also have a dual charger for the batteries. Now this comes in the kit. Definitely not the fastest charging charger, but it's there for you. Also want to throw this out there, you cannot use your 20 volt XR batteries on the saw, only the sexy flexi batteries will work with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you hear this thing start out with the battery power, then we'll switch it over to the cord. If you were using the batteries, I would suggest you put this built in plug right here so you don't get any water down in there. Alright, here we go, battery start up. So smooth, let's move it to the corded. Now you can definitely hear the difference between being plugged in or not being plugged in. You have that electric rev up almost, but the battery is just so smooth. Let's make a cut. Oh, baby. Now we're going to do a lot of different cuts here on this saw, but let's talk about some of the specs and the features on this. All right, let's talk about the sliding and the gliding. Now you do got the loosener right there, and then you got your clamp right here. You can take the battery out, or you can just bring that all the way down, slide your miter out, and then just flip it all the way back. Now as for the slider, it's definitely smooth, but it's not as free gliding as a lot of the other saws that I have used. A little bit of resistance there, nothing major, but I'm just letting you know that I've noticed some. When it goes to sliding that across your wood, again, you're going to notice a little bit of resistance, but it does a really, really good job. And everything on the saw when you're making these cuts, it just, I'm telling you, so freaking smooth. But what about the blade break? So the blade stops really, really quick, and when it comes to pulling the trigger, I don't notice a lot of jumping or bouncing, you know, when that power kicks in. As far as it goes with your fence or your backstops over here, well, they're pretty simple to put in and out. But, you know, what I like about this is that they set up pretty high, so you could put larger material on there. As for your clamp, you know, it is what it is. It's a little bit stiff when you get it out front, and it's just like every other model that you see out there today. Once you get it adjusted, you still got to crank it down for three hours before you can get it to lock down what you need to lock down. Moving on, you do have your depth stop adjustment right here. You got a wing nut, and then you can just unloosen it, adjust it to where you need it to be, and then tighten it back up again. So it works pretty good. If you're doing the same cut over and over again, well, this will work for you. I'll tell you what else would work. If you could smash that like button, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. 
Now, of course, the saw is a double bevel. And how to do that is, well, you just loosen it up right here on the back. You know, basically like every other miter saw. And you bring it down to the left, or I'll show you how you can bring it to the right. I am going to tell you, this thing is a little top heavy. Yeah, I get that it's a 12 inch and I get, oh man, up. But I'm just letting you know, that's what we do here. We review. It's not the lightest when it comes to the bevel. It is, however, very smooth. I also like that Dewalt yellow. It makes those numbers really easy to read. Now, if I wanted to go to the right, I just pull that out and I can bring it down. You also got your positive stops right here. You just swing those out and that will prevent from hitting those. And then if you bring them back in, you can stop it at those positive marks. So, you know, that's cool. But let's do some more slicing in the dice. And we got the treated four by six right here. What will it do? We're going to put it to the test. Now we're doing all battery. Listen, the cord is going to work great, but uh, you're looking at this saw for battery power. Let's see what it does. It's just so beastly. Look at the finished cut on this. Now I'm using a 60 tooth Dewalt blade. I gotta start giving Dewalt a little bit more credit for their blades because that is phenomenal. I mean, it's almost like a gloss on that thing. It cuts so well. Let's do it again. So much power on that saw. Now I know the other picture was a little bit blurry, but I'm telling you, these blades, a 60 tooth, that is a really nice freaking cut on a treated four by six. Whoo, wait. I mean, that is pretty. All right, now we got some pine here. Let's see what it does. This is basically just a, a stair tread. And uh, here we go. And again, that cut, man, sure is pretty. I mean, it's real nice like. Sorry. All right, here's the blade I'm using. It's the Dewalt 62. This comes with the saw. And again, it got the 62s. Really impressed by that blade. I'm definitely going to have to check them out a little bit more when it comes to blades because I'm usually using the other ones. But okay, what about your miter? You got 11 of the most popular positive stops on the saw. Super easy to make. You can do a couple different things here. You can push the button, start to move it, let go of the button, it'll automatically lock into that next positive stop. If you hold that button down, you can go left or right freely. Or if you wanted to, instead of holding the button down, you could come over, push your button down, and then flip the switch. And now you can go left or right without holding any buttons down. But I have to ask you, do you really use that feature all that much? I'm curious, leave me a comment in the comment section below. And then once you find the cut you want, you just lock it. Lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it. Uh, it, lock it. Super easy adjustment. Degree cuts to the left, you're looking at 50. Degree cuts to the right, you're looking at 60. Maximum cut thickness on this saw, you're looking at six and three quarter inches. So that's really nice. Let's do a bevel cut here. This is some MDF. The cuts that this saw makes is just really just unbelievable to me. Absolutely no wobble. Everything is lined up perfectly. And, uh, you know, the vibration, there's hardly any vibration. This is just a beautiful cutting saw. Now, one of the things I don't like about this saw, the headlock button right here and the motor casing, well, it gets in the way. You know, that fence is just sort of banging up against it. So even if you bring it out, you're not going to get past it. So if you want to go all the way out with that, if you want to slide it all the way out, you got to remove that fence completely just to get that all the way out there. Just throwing that out there at you. Just a different angle for you. All right, so what about the dust collection? Let's get a larger piece of MDF. Oh, oh, there he is. It's the MDF is the devil devil. He really does got some moves. All right, thank you, MDF is a devil devil. All right, here we go with the dust collector right here. Let's see what it does. Hmm. 
<laughs> not very much. Let's try a different angle. All right, so it's not bad, but it's definitely not the best I've used. You know, the MDF is the devil. So it really is going to go everywhere. But I think that dust collector will help a little bit. Oh, by the way, you got an LED light right up on top in case you didn't know. The shadow line, pretty good. But let's see what we got back here. I mean, we didn't cut all that much today, but, you know, it did do a pretty good job collecting a lot of that MDF dust. You could, however, put a vacuum on the back of that, and it might help out a little bit more. But it is what it is. I mean, no miter saw dust collection systems all that great. 3,800 RPM on this bad boy. Definitely, definitely slices and dices through anything you put on this thing. I like the larger pronounced numbers on that miter. The build quality, ooh la la, it is just awesome. I pick a little bit, well, that blade stop a little bit too small, and your guard won't stay up by itself either. Listen, at the end of the day, this saw is fantastic. There are one of two people that are going to buy this. The professional or somebody that wants to buy tools that the professionals are using. It is just built very, very well and it works amazingly well. I definitely think it's a little heavy or it feels a little heavier than what the weight is claiming. I definitely feel that it doesn't glide and slide. I think there's a little bit of resistance on there, which some people might like. Me, I like a little bit more of that you know, free-flowing, easy-to-use, gliding motion. I think a couple things get in the way of each other, but other than that, it's just a fantastic saw. And I think they're really smart to have a dual power supply, the batteries or the cord. So I want to know what you think. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Have you used this saw? Do you plan on using this saw? What did you like about it? What don't you like about it? I love hearing the feedback in the comments from you all. If you've enjoyed any part of this video, which I hope you have, please smash that like button. Get subscribed and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any new reviews coming to the channel. I appreciate you stopping by with that. We'll be back with more videos soon.